agreed to the conditions agree to the conditions <laughs> getting me into <laughs> Welcome back to Here We Grow. I'm so excited to be here. This is episode 22, which is a great number. And I have a very special guest, the main man of my life, my whole life, my papa bear. Pretty amazing. We've been talking about this moment for a really long time. It makes us emotional. It's big. Been a big journey to get here. And uh, yeah, welcome, welcome. Good morning. Good morning. <laughs> and so, talk. already, already crying. Yeah. <laughs> it's amazing. Feels good. Does feel good. Very, very proud of where you've come. Mm. Your journey. Yeah. <clears throat> A lot of people may not have any idea how far you've come to get where you are and that you didn't just step into this place easily and how you flowed with your heart. Yeah, being able to watch that, it's been very motivating. So yeah. you become my teacher, <laughs> baby girl. Yeah. We've, yeah. Been, we've been each other's teacher for our whole lives, multiple lives. <laughs> Yes, just seems that way, doesn't it? it does. Seems like a few, a few lives. Yeah. Thinking back. So yeah, very excited to be here. Had a good start to the morning. So yeah. Tell me, tell me what to do. <laughs> I love that that's how you started your morning because it hasn't always been that way. So with that, what I like to ask my guests is what keeps you growing every day? What keeps me growing? Mm -hmm. Ooh, that's a, a big question. Probably you, you asked me a word for the year. It took me a long time, but probably trying to stay with the flow and not fight and try and make things happen or be reactive to things and mm. going with your heart, going with that. We all have those couple of voices in our head, I think, that you're always having that conversation and learning to listen to the right voice. Keeps you going in the right direction, hopefully. And yeah. Uh, exercise has always been a, a big part of our lives from day one. I think as a kid, I was always busy and exercised and liked exercising and all the years through all the stress, I think that's one thing that I would attribute to being able to keep keep going is to keep that mind body connection. Because the days that I would skip it or not do it or talk myself out of mm -hmm. not listening to that right voice, you always it's a whole different. You feel wired differently, which is what I guess we're going to ultimately talk about a little bit. Um, being an electrician for forty plus years. Yeah. master electrician um we had a conversation taking you to the airport for some one of your trips i think yeah it was my birthday birthday trip and we listened to a podcast on grounding so podcast that's another way to keep going reading writing all, all the things yeah try not to put those things off keep you going but um the the gentleman i forget who it was but talked about grounding and mm -hmm. a real light bulb mm -hmm. went off because that's what I've done my whole life is been in the electrical industry and uh, and how important grounding is in the industry I mean if you didn't have if you don't have grounding things don't work and same with human beings if if we're not working at being grounded uh finding ways whatever works at the time for each individual person, but to get you grounded to breath. Mm. Always, um, sorry, kind of rambling, but makes me think of a, our good friend Casey Boone had given me a little medallion keychain 30 years ago. <laughs> Let's breathe. Yeah. Yeah. You know, how simple. Yeah. So simple. 
and to have that on your keychain for so many years and then to one day look down and go, oh yeah, that's what that is. And do you feel like that's what exercise, that's why that's a core sure. piece of your day is that it's the breath and the connection? Yeah, I think breath is top on the list. Yeah. Swimming, that's my story of swimming from you. Thankfully, you bought me a pass and it took me, what, two years? <laughs> yeah, let's talk about that. To finally go to the pool. Oh, just silly <laughs> human being. Kept putting it off, putting it off. And we're, I could stand here, look out the window and see the rec center. Yep. <laughs> but what and did you do? Decided, well, I'll call and maybe it'll be, I was, hopefully I was thinking it was canceled. But I called to go, oh no, it's still in there. So she reactivated it and I was like, dang it. <laughs> so then I did a drive by and then I believe I did a walk through <laughs> to a place you've been hundreds of times that I grew up watching me built that my dad was big part of the rec district starting and the rec building being built and I remember as a little kid standing there yeah. in the pool yeah so you're so how so crazy is that when my daughter buys me a <laughs> pass 40 years later or however long yeah. <clears throat> sorry yeah and what was yeah. the what was the, my exercise I did my Nordic track at home of course but yeah yeah oh the Nord oh the Nordic what was what <laughs> was the, the resistance in that moment like just what change, just new change uncomfortable all the things we can come up with a million reasons why not to yeah and then just taking that finally stepping in there and doing it and coming mm -hmm. Uh, <laughs> yeah. this is great and sw well swimming honestly swimming was tough well the other part of the story my uncle bill who swam with his daughter brenda had been kind of a, a mentor and encouraging yeah. and had sent my dad a bag with a swimsuit and goggles and some stuff and <clears throat> i don't think my dad ever used it but i still have it yeah so uh, just interesting how all all the things come together when you look back yeah and the swimming was difficult because I was an okay swimmer but being a, born and raised in Evergreen Colorado not a lot of swimming other than the pool yeah and you know it took several times before I didn't feel like I was drowning and then once I got that breath it definitely that's and now when I swim I really only swim for the breath I'm not really in this like oh I'm going to try and swim a mile I don't even have a gauge I just swim and yeah. when I'm done I'm done yeah yeah big part of the journey so yeah that's definitely kept me going and I guess all of it is is breath related yeah uh, mm -hmm. love that probably now trying to eat a little better <laughs> eating better and eliminating things that don't serve my body yeah. Keep trying to keep all the poisons out. That's been a, a big one, especially the booze. That was a yeah. big one to give up, even yeah. though it served me well over the years. We, we could do a whole episode or two on that. We will. <laughs> we will. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Love. <laughs> yeah. Definitely love for my family. Got a very tight, close family. Yeah, we do. So, keeps us going hmm. life is tough it is i know i need those all those little tools of reading and writing and uh, exercising and nature and enjoying the every day waking up with the attitude of gratitude i think is a big part the meditations are huge yeah um, all those That's little pieces. They're all little things that just little pieces that help you get up and get going and get, get that day rolling. Get, yeah. Get your wiring going, really, because I really did a little bit more research and found out uh, more about, well, back to our listening to the thing, the podcast on grounding and how we talked and talked about it, really, that bulb came on and, uh, so I've been doing a little bit of research on and off. And then when you invited me to do a session with you, I did a little more. Yeah. Uh, we actually run off of up to 48 volts. Wow. Our body. 
Wow. We measure it. Um, and even in resting, we're putting out about 100 watts worth wow. of power, which is a 100 watt light bulb or 10 LED bulbs. Wow. Which is really interesting when you think about that. Yeah. And I'm like, okay, well, where does that electricity come from? You know, all the questions in life of who is God or where is energy or where does it come from? Where does life come from? And yeah, all I could really find is a lot of it comes from what we put in our bodies. Um, magnesium, sodium, potassium, those kind of things react with each other. And if we have the right levels of things in our body and we're, we'll, our electrical field is running right we're wired right and everything is good and if you think of it if not that's probably when people start feeling negative or resistant or depressed maybe or foggy or whatever might occur by not having your field your field of energy running properly and so really it's key to what you do to keep that and i'm, I'm interested in looking forward to learning more and more about it because um I've always thought, man, if we're putting out that kind of energy, what if we could tap it back into the system somehow? Or like if I did this morning, did the Peloton and burned up a couple hundred calories and whatnot, and you're putting out 100 to 200 watts the whole time, if that could go back in the grid somehow, you know? Yeah. And then to realize how we're all connected yeah. energy wise, energy field wise, it's just uh, powerful. pretty interesting. It's yeah. very powerful. And then to have worked you know, with electricity all those years from super high voltage down to computer and phone lines, you know, it's, it, and nobody, you can't see it. Nobody can really explain it 100% how, how it works the way it does, but yeah, capture it and control it. And Is that, so could you call it a current that's running through us? Like that electricity is a current? Mm -hmm. It's definitely running from your brain to your sure. heart even though your heart actually responds to the electrical signals from your from your brain and your cells so your cells activate kind of like protons and neutrons mm -hmm. do in electrical field they push each other mm -hmm. so if you're out of balance in any way yeah. like nature and you're not you know boy maybe that's why ec exercise might be relative is you look what nature does it releases lightning or mm. thunderstorms or hurricanes i mean that's the earth's energy out of balance mm -hmm. that's how it releases yeah. so as humans we're the same mm -hmm. we're connected so if you have those little things you can you're feeling nervous or not wanting to if, if you're feeling off balance or or not not right finding those little things little meditation or walk outside or listening to a podcast or writing your feelings to, you know, something to release that energy to get yourself back into balance, if that makes sense. And I'm certainly not a Definitely. PhD in it, but yeah. seems like it's all coming together yeah. in my mind, just from a little bit of studying of how, you know, we're, we're so bombarded and how easily we get out of balance. I mean, it's every day we, you and I talk about that every day, like, dang it. <laughs> yesterday was so good why is today not so good yeah and it could be what you ate it could be what you did the day before it could be just the energy it could be the moon yeah. I'm very sensitive to the moon people say yeah it shouldn't be i've read a lot about that too some agree it has influence some say it's kind of a myth but i i know it because i live it i yeah, can tell yeah i we can tell so I think when you're tuned into your own energy, the energies around you were more sensitive to yeah. feel more. And so I love this tying in with exercise because we don't have a lot of ways in our life, really healthy ways to fully process like with, uh, with like, I don't want to say aggression, but just with like a lot of effort, like where in our life are we putting a lot of effort into processing this energy in a healthy way? Right. So exercise is that for us, for our body to maybe get the currency and the current back into alignment. Sure. 
you know? Yeah. So if you start your day with that and you're like, okay, cause we think, oh, we've slept. And so when we wake up, we should be rested, but actually sleep. There's like, you're saying when you're laying down and resting, what was it? A hundred bolts, hundred watts. hundred watts. So you're laying there all night with a hundred watts running through your system. And then you wake up. And if you just try and like run into your day, like where's that energy going to go? And if it's discombobulated, yeah it stays discombobulated for the day. So what a, an incredible and powerful way to start the day with like exercise, read and write to plant some seeds to get that current back in alignment. Mm -hmm. And then when things get thrown at your way that are stressful because our life is so busy and so go, 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 go. And so intertwined with other people's emotions, you're more easily handling the situation when your current, your own current is in alignment. And, mm -hmm. and that all goes back to what you just said about grounding. Mm -hmm. I think like tying that all in and talking about what, when it comes to electricity in someone's home, just to make it really easily understandable, what does that grounding piece in someone's home do? Makes everything work. <laughs> well, yeah, it's, a, okay. it's, a, it's a circuit, yeah. you know, like a switch is on or off. Yeah. So that voltage is sitting there and it, I can go put my hand on that wire that's that's bringing power to that switch and it won't do anything to me because it's grounded if i touch, if I touch no it's not grounded oh. i'm not grounded oh. so electricity however it's produced whether it's from gas or coal or solar or dams or water or nuclear all the different ways it's produced it's that's another whole thing that i'm just can't even imagine how it's all put into place as you drive around this country and you see these massive power lines going up like here in Colorado going up over 14,000 foot peaks that are carrying hundreds of thousands of volts across that wire but until it's grounded it's mm -hmm. nothing it's oh. invisible it's not wow. doing it's all that energy is being produced you know by big turbine big engines that are spinning that are the size of a house that's what creates that energy, that's electromagnetic force. But till it goes to a, a, till that circuit goes to the earth, which is ground, back into the ground, it, it's nothing. It's not a circuit. In fact, I remember going to Wilmot School. I don't know if it was you or one of the boys or Danny, maybe Danny, and did uh, a little thing on electricity for the kids and whatnot been telling them you know trying to explain that concept and like how you see a bird land on a wire and nothing happens to it but if you were to ground it if that bird was to touch a ground wire it would you know blow it to pieces and one little kid was just fascinated by that he kept going back to <laughs> how we get that bird <laughs> what if we did this what if we what if we reached up with this or that how he like had in his mind he was gonna he was gonna make that happen somehow <laughs> you know, it's just amazing and then it breaks down into the smaller and smaller voltages and goes through transformer just you know kind of a simple explanation transforms down to the voltages we use you know every day in our homes and take so for granted you know we flip a switch the light comes on yeah and you think back to where that is coming from you know from that source across all those lines into the ground and up to your house and but if you disrupt that ground it's nothing it will not do anything yeah. So if your body's not grounded, I think it's very similar. It just it sits there and builds up, you know, that unbalance and that energy field and actually make a big thing in our industry is in the electrical industry is search protection and, and grounding and stuff. So I was looking into that and they actually do make grounding mats for oh, yeah. human body. Probably aware of, but they have all kinds of different things. So I'm learning, learning a whole new, shining a whole new light on yeah. the electrical trade and how we're wired and how everything is wired is just fascinating yeah. to, to me so got some more homework to do yeah. down the road but um yeah that already is just so eye-opening and I think that as we integrate that into our daily life and and we start to do the inner work which goes all the way full circle back to this piece of you starting the swimming practice. That was a part of a new habit to do the inner work. And sometimes when it's time to face the inner work, that could be scary, right? Because what's going to come up when I change the pattern in my life, even if the patterns are 
out of balance and out of whack and we're not grounded, it's still mm -hmm. familiar. So all of a sudden, you know, it's going to be healthy and you know, it's going to help and it's still hard and still scary. So having that grounding practice to go along with it, mm -hmm. keeping everything like life is nothing without grounding and a way to process. Yeah. Well, I'm funny, even in that, even in exercise, even when I started kind of getting into the swimming and was doing good and feeling so good and I'd get done and just be like, man, and then I'd be like, I started thinking, God, what if I go somewhere and I can't swim? I started getting worried, you know, we're, we're so silly as human beings. I was already, Attachment. Getting, yeah, these thoughts of what if, you know, what if I can't do this anymore? And I think mm. the you're open to it you'll always find something else will present itself i i believe mm -hmm. i really do if, if you're open to it if you're looking for it if you're taking care of yourself and yeah. doing the best you can every day and doing the four agreements just mm -hmm. assuming not taking things personal um and and growing mm -hmm. podcast says and making progress in any way i mean there's so many different ways and everybody's probably got their different what what, what i think and not a, not being a doctor but watching how we do deal with it like you say some of the stuff that doesn't serve us well and keeps us down but it's comfortable and we're used to it and, and we're familiar with it but you know an example of getting up and not doing the things you know are going to help you and and going and having a couple of cups of coffee and rushing out of the house and then getting that rush of caffeine and and trying to you know it's just a terrible way to you know which obviously disrupts your energy field and and so many other things in in the world that are made to try and deal with that energy balance with medications or coffees or alcohol or drugs or food or whatever other ways you can do it but there seems to be just the two in, in my life the, the two simple things that always work is 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 breath and exercise and yeah. Yeah. Stay, trying to stay somewhat grounded yeah and i think the beautiful thing that i keep thinking of with this grounding practice is no matter where you are you have that exactly yeah. So the exercise you can figure out That's kind of an answer, yeah. swimming, all those pieces, like, like you're saying that will come, you'll figure it out. You'll figure a way to process the energy and move the energy. But as long for me, as long as I can take even a couple moments, you know, going into a big meeting, taking a few moments, just some deep breaths and grounding or like my morning starting that way. So I'm curious on those days that you were running out of the house and you were on your way without the exercise and maybe coffee was <laughs> heavy or maybe even the drinking times, like what, when you think back to that, what does that feel like to see the difference, the, the polarization of life now? Oh, it's night and day. Yeah. I I don't know how much longer I could have really continued. I mean, growing up, you know, as a background, I grew up in a town of 1500 people when I was a kid. And it took me a while to realize why I would be, I would get so out of balance. That feel would get that feeling, the feelings of being in the city, as you know, I, I you live down there and sometimes I didn't see you for a long time, even unless you were up here, but yeah. sorry, I'm losing my train of thought, but uh just the busyness spark, and the balance you, of well you sparked a few things yeah that made me realize um that i guess finally to the point where being so sick and tired of being sick and tired and miserable that you know what i was doing wasn't working yeah. and taking those slow steps to start getting back into balance and doing things and was able to you know the last few years learn to actually kind of enjoy driving around the city and kind of proud of myself that I got through it and learn I could probably find anywhere in the city now and I don't mind driving it it, it definitely changed my whole way of dealing with uh 
with the city and then and you know using the right you know using the meditating and or the the you know even getting off the coffee and everything everybody's like you're not drinking coffee what's the matter with you know whatever but it definitely was a big night and day difference to be able to deal with the stress and I think mentally also sparked something in my mind that made me think you can always with just those simple few breaths and which helps you get back that flow back into balance a little bit and to get your thinking right which reminded me of a, a story I read about a, a prisoner of war guy that uh, did that mentally in solitary confinement and his thing was golf and he played rounds of golf over and over when he got out he shot par golf Wow! so I think in the long run and I'm learning even more not to wander too far but with the stretching and the things I've been doing with Kelsey mm -hmm. again the power of your mind if if you're in good working order like a, a good high performance vehicle if it's got all the right things going on it's amazing what you could do so even if you you fear I, I think what it would help maybe if I could make a point here that instead of fearing oh my gosh what's going to happen if this is taken out of my life I won't be able to feel so good anymore I won't have this thing that helps me feel so good is knowing that yes you will there'll always be yeah. something there'll always be a path that will open if you're open to it and and that breathing is what reading and just living that that form of life is what I think will help you keep that good and it's you know it's renewable and it's free and you don't you don't have to worry about losing it I don't think yeah that being being awake I guess yeah and and breath makes us conscious and aware right so then that gets our mind on the right track and then we get this ability to believe in all of the abundance that's available to us when we're out of sync and out of order and we're breathing short and shallow and we're stressed, of course, everything feels overwhelming. Nothing feels possible. The opportunities are limited. So I think that that's what you're getting at is that you slow down and you're now more of an observer of your life and life oh. is happening for you instead of to you. So now you're in the city seeing the people from a grounded place instead of stressed and like this intense vibration with them and and some people flourish off of that and I think that was the other point you were making like growing up in the mountains which is very much instilled within me is that that is like by far the place where we ground you know I know you and I feel that vibration very clearly <laughs> we're skiing you know you taught us from an early age like get outside we were always in sports we were active we were skiing from a young age like our church on Sundays was at the mountain church of love like we were as high as we could get to God and source and sun and energy and light and universe as we could and having that instilled within us is so so powerful and that is what will be available always mm -hmm. It is cool. Yeah. Um, I think thanks to grandpa. I think he was the one that kept us out doing that. Yeah. Yeah. And grandma had babies and worried. <laughs> <laughs> she was a worrier for sure. Smoked cigarettes and drank coffee. Yeah. Well, her system was not grounded. <laughs> Poor thing. Well, it's been a big, big lesson of my life. I think that watching her try and deal with with that imbalance and trusting the standard medical routine, which I'm sure helps many, many people and, yeah. and done the right way can help. But she was looking for that magic oh. bullet. And unfortunately, doesn't there's exist. not yeah. Does exist. Yeah. yeah. And we've seen that a lot in our family and in our life and in our culture, right? We want this quick, yeah. easy fix. Yep. But that's not long term. And I do believe in Western medicine and the surgeries and the advancements and all those pieces. But if it's not balanced with health and wellness from a na nature standpoint, a holistic standpoint, like those two really get to go hand in hand yeah. and that's what's missing. And I, I believe that that's, what's coming to light right now for our cultures is people going, wait a minute, you're spraying what on our food and you're giving me this pill for how long, or, you know, you're not talking to me about my mental health. And 
I want to go back a little bit too, because they say that our stomach is actually our main brain. So when you think of that in the currency of energy, what comes up in that source? When I think of that? Yeah. Like, cause you were saying brain is our brain power, which it is truly. It's like our main operating system. Our brain is so control center. yeah. Control but center. Well, but it's, well, it's feeding and off. Gut. It's feeding off that yeah. gut system or what that, what is it being put in, in your body? And that's, yeah. I don't know what chakra that is, but. Your belly is your sacral chakra. Sacral, yeah. It's but I, you know a lot more about that than I do, but I would think if that is out of sorts, it's sending bad fuel to the brain. It's sending, you know, toxic fuel to the brain. Yeah. So then your brain's not only getting it out of sorts, but working to deal with that instead of working all the other parts of your body that it needs to. So then that's obviously going to cause other issues of inflammation and pain, I'm guessing, you know, throughout your body, which I, I know if I, like, say, if I get my hand in the cookie jar or I take a weekend and kind of relax and don't worry about it and eat this and that and go out to the restaurant, eat some greasy food, blah, blah, blah. I know it Monday morning, Tuesday morning, my knees hurt, my hands hurt, my earth, my little arthritis knuckles are, you know, all puffed up. So yeah. it's pretty obvious. Yeah. You know, I think it's, yeah. if you just take a minute and, and see that, it's pretty, pretty obvious. It's not easy, but obvious which which is the better path to go down i i believe i think the i think it was a real disservice to my mom in particular because i i watched that happen and felt helpless not being able to get her to uh try and go a different direction it was hard to finally give up you know yeah that, that she was just kind of trapped in that place where where I would never want to be. It was a pretty dark place off and on. Yeah. And I wish if she, you know, could have just got outside and gotten a little bit more activity in her life. I saw a few times over their life that they did. And man, night and day. Yeah. Talk about the rec center, they had a free pass. Yeah. Lifetime. Sorry. Yeah. yeah. But uh, they went, you know, off and on and then they'd get that in their head again. Oh, it's too cold. It's too dark it's too this too that <clears throat> um but I, I i guess looking back i'm realizing that i saw that and how much different they they their life started doing when they would do that for a few months and then they seem to keep slipping back into that that old habit routine that was comfortable you know, the chair <laughs> never let me have a recliner <laughs> <laughs> if I buy a recliner, We're out. better come. Yeah. Burn it. The, Burn it. Yeah. The great grandpa story. <laughs> he, Hello, uh, chair. Yeah, he was he was at our house for it was maybe Thanksgiving or something. And you said, mm -hmm. Dad, you ready to go home? He was at that time in a facility where, you know, just senior resource type facility for a really beautiful place. But he's like, yep, ready. He get him, get him up there and open his door. And he goes, hello, chair. Yeah, he <laughs> whispered shuffled. under his breath. Hello, chair. Hello, chair. <laughs> just shuffled over there. I have a couple friends, Mike Carter, good friend and mentor. He tells people that story all the time. It's good and sad because that was a safe space. And, and my grandpa, you know, now that I have this practice of grounding and connecting to whatever this higher power, this bigger energy, this source that's bigger than us, I feel my grandparents, I feel the people that are, you know, um, no longer with us. And mm -hmm. he, he came in strong this morning, you know, like he was always so wise in his ways i wish that there would have been more words from him but mm -hmm. it's, it was just his energy that spoke you know and he was such a wise man that when he did speak we all listened yeah because <laughs> it was finally like oh you know grandpa tom's he talking <laughs> yep. let's listen or you know he would say don't, don't like, sweat the small stuff for yeah, yeah taking a day at a time Stop and smell the roses. Don't hurry. Don't worry. Stop and smell the roses. Or yeah. he was meditating all the time, which I think he was just napping. Totally. But. <laughs> totally. 
he journeyed a lot of miles in that chair. He journeyed a lot. Yeah, he was. But he woke up, you know, in little things that, you know, he used to say it's what you, what you learn after you know it all that really counts. That was a good one. Wow, and and it took one. a lifetime to, to realize some, wow. of, some of those little tidbits that he did say. And oh. uh, wow. I remember how he would wait. He said he would wake up and, you know, wiggle his toes and, yeah. and his legs and his fingers and his arm. I mean, the same thing that some of these meditations are doing today. And this was 50 years ago. So he was definitely very in tune, wow. I think very grounded. So wise. Very grounded. Yeah. And and I think, you know, a hard life, just things, things that happened that just kind of finally took their toll. And man, it's understandable. How many days do we want to go screw it? Oh. I'm done. I don't want to battle this anymore. And 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 if you and if you have the wrong energy field going or you put the wrong things in your body or not done some of the things to keep you in, in a good state of mind or balance, then you, it's so easy to see how that can progress. I mean, I, I have no judgment at all. Yeah. None. No, nope. no judgment at all. Just a, a little heavy heart that, that wasn't able to, you know, be, be different or better, but yeah. I'm sure now wherever they are, that they're in, a, in a, another energy space or another go around I, is how I, feel about it whatever they you know they're in heaven if that's what they wanted um, i don't know it's hard to we'll never know they're around us my heart energy. You know, my heart all the time yeah. yeah yeah and i think a hard life combined with not a lot of resources for health and wellness and alcohol heavy alcohol use you know now i think that's one of the greatest blessings of technology is just being able to have all of the resources at your fingertips. You can get therapy help. You can get, you know, nutrition guidance. You can get support. You can get any information you want. You can research what alcohol does to you. You know, like back then you didn't know, you just kind of used it and knew that it wasn't great, but I think he used it for so long. Right. And then his body started shutting down and then history repeated itself. And that started happening through you, right? Like you used it for so sure. long and all of a sudden your body started being, just revolting it and yeah, totally. just so like it's just the repetitiveness of of what we pass down because we only know what we see mm -hmm. and learn through that through our caregivers and it's not wrong or right or good or bad it just is mm -hmm. and breaking that cycle it's it is truly breaking of a cycle and of a of a really deep pattern and hard yeah really hard but so rewarding at the end of the day. Yeah. I love how the rec center is this staple, like speaking yeah. about this conversation that grandpa helped build it, right? Mm -hmm. And could have freely utilized this incredible resource. And when he did, he felt good and like the light started shining through him, but it was mm -hmm. effort. And maybe it was grandma not being all in or circumstance. Yeah. Cold, cold, too cold, too hot, yeah. <laughs> you know, and then I went there, yeah. I went there as a gymnast and Thomas and Ryan went there for their sports, yeah. you know, you went there throughout your school years, I'm sure. And now here all of a sudden, how many years later you get this pass from me when you're figuring out your next habits and steps and you know, it's just really, it's cool. And it's cool that that's like in our backyard and accessible still to this day to all of us. And now to your grandkids, my nephews, you know, they'll be using, they already are, they're using the skate park and the playground. And mm -hmm. it's just mm -hmm. the pool and the pool up at Wolf. And at him every time I, I go and thank him. So he did that. <laughs> he built it's, that. It's not an easy thing to, to pass up here because people didn't want to attract more people up here. Yeah. So they voted it down for quite a while. In fact, the last time they had a levy here to expand Buchanan, which they need to do, they turned it, it got, it got voted down. But I, I think if it comes up again, it, I think it'll pass because it's, it's since COVID, it's been super busy. So I think a lot more people are, I think COVID was in a way a good thing in that respect that I've never seen as many people out and about because when I used before COVID, sometimes I'd be over there, be nobody there. 
literally like very few people, especially Wolf Rec Center, there'd be nobody in there, yeah. which was kind of sad. Yeah. But yeah, so I guess the highlight the highlights of COVID. There are there are some for sure. Oh, for sure. I mean, yeah, people getting outside, maybe looking at like you said, a new shift of hey, yeah. wait a minute, but kind of like the rug being pulled back over your eyes a little bit, like, wait a minute. <laughs> Hold on. Hey, you, you said this is make me feel good or this is good <laughs> for me. You lied to me. Yeah. All about who you listen to, but yeah. Awesome. I think, uh, yeah. Cool. A lot, a lot to take in looking back that you that you say that I'd all I'll fit together. Yeah. Yeah. Exciting to think how it will continue to unfold yeah and i would say the probable probably the main just overarching message from today's wired is grounding mm -hmm. starting start with grounding start every day with grounding start each difficult moment each exciting moment like nothing i think that's one of my favorite things about some of the meditators talk so much about is nothing's permanent right mm -hmm. but as long as you have your breath and you have this moment like yeah it's an amazing body that runs itself without any effort really yeah yeah take a few deep breaths yeah you know. speak breaths <laughs> mm, yeah it's amazing it's been an amazing part of the journey to be able to have this is a resource of conversation because this feels like a pretty typical conversation that we have. <laughs> and that's yeah. why I thought, why aren't we recording this? Because it does feel like just utilizing each other's wisdom and um, it, life experiences. And, and for so long, I, especially when I found sobriety, I wanted to save everybody and that's not my job you know, and for so long, I wanted to save you and help you out of that. Cause I could see the shift, right? Like here's my dad and he's this bright light. And then he drinks this thing and all of a sudden he's not. And so you're wanting to pull and help and fix and carry. And it's not possible. Like you get to let everybody be on their own journey. And so I'm just like really deeply grateful that you found that and you, and you found that for yourself first and foremost, because that was going to be the only thing that kept you there was doing it for yourself and it's just from there been really really powerful to watch and just be a recipient of and and be able to see you start talking about meditating and energy and it's just really it's really yeah, cool a, somebody that doesn't like to sit still i've always been a <laughs> don't, don't sit still for long so it's been nice to from but from learning so much from you and then mm -hmm. doing it more often, but yeah. yeah. That'd be a good episode too, talking about, cause no one really likes to sit st like stillness is so difficult. And I think we think we're broken that we can't sit in meditation and have no thoughts, which actually isn't meditation. Right. So that might be a really cool thing to lean into. And one of these wireds is, is that like misperception of what that is it's actually right. just yeah. being aware <laughs> right how we're wired to be able to do or not do that type of thing mm -hmm. yeah very nice and very inspired mm. allowing me to to say some stuff yeah if i if like say you can't change or fix or do it for anybody it's no different than food or anything else that you want to share with somebody and when you do things that make you feel so good and appreciate life and everything around you you want to share that with people yeah. which i'm so proud that you have done and that that's your main goal and that's my goal if it helps somebody somewhere think wow that's really cool i'm going to try try a grounding practice i've, I've really been out of whack so yeah if that if that's a thing then that would be great yeah one person you told me that a while ago because i was feeling really overwhelmed and you said nikki if you help one person i'm like wow that's cool yeah. 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 yeah yeah and this it's inevitable right like the light will always in my opinion the light and the love 
will always win. The light will always outshine the dark. And so when you're living a life that is in alignment to the light, you are inevitably going to inspire and encourage somebody because the ripple effect is true and real <laughs> and, and more powerful than anything. Yeah. Very, very cool. Well, thank you for being episode 22. What a great number for us to start with. They're 11s and twos. Yeah. Keep, I like your word for the year and keep, keep in the flow. flow. Yeah. Always, flow. always trying to get ahead of the flow and that doesn't work either. No. Trying to stay in the sweet spot. Yeah. Ooh. How about... Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much for the opportunity and to put something like this even together. Would have ever thought it was possible. Yeah. Well, I did have my little vision a few years ago, but it was on a stage somewhere. So yeah, maybe that's to come. Maybe that's in the future. I think so. It'd be cool to do some touring and speaking and introduce my beautiful, awesome daughter. Mm -hmm. Such a bright light. Mm -hmm. Thanks, Dad. I love you very much. Love you too. <laughs>